Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So I've decided to do a little bit of cycle division today. I uh, started off in B class in this session. I started off in B class. I was doing some stock car, more, some more stock car racing, and the lobby were a little bit small. So I've gone into cycle division, and obviously I've chosen the Alfa Romeo Spider. So here we go. We'll see how we do. Nice little launch off of the line, better than the uh, prelude there. Um, somebody else has got a little bit, looks like maybe using a bit of a speed tune, but he's probably going to struggle at Lime Rock. Goes for quite an aggressive looking overtake, there's some contact. And then somebody goes a little bit drifty or laggy, possibly, right by me. I've already got a couple of people off of the track, it looks like he's going to, yep, a terrible rejoin and take somebody out there. So he's actually come off quite well, he's uh, rejoined really badly, but now he's off the track again. And I rather cautiously pass him. It looks like I've got the run on the guy in the prelude, I think that's a prelude, but he's managed to get to the corner before me. So looking back it looks like we're clear of any trouble now. Just getting my breaking points for the chicane, it's quite a tricky one. I'm going to try and keep it clean here for now. Uh, sometimes I like to take the, the old Forza lines. Uh, before the before we had the race regulations and the newer uh, the change of track limits, I sometimes just on, on this track. Um, if it, if it's not so much of a serious race, you know, if it's just a fun like this one, uh, sometimes I'll just take a bit of a cut on the the, the left hander, the, the last part of that she came. So I'm getting a little bit closer now to the guy. Pretty sure that's the 94 Prelude. Quite a nice car, actually. He's gone, taken a very strange line. He's got it all wrong, so I'm just going to rather, again, cautiously take the cut back and get that position. That's another position. And now there's quite a gap to the guy ahead, to the next person along. But really, it's just nice to be driving this car. It's something a little bit different, the sort of thing that you can't usually use if, if you were racing in you know a normal B class or C class uh, car like this you know some of these cars you probably maybe not crop up quite as much so it is one of the nice things about cycle division you get to use some cars you don't normally get to use it looks as though somebody's caught me up fairly rapidly now um, I think they're driving the MX-5 the Mazda MX-5 the Mark 1 uh, so he usually um, they've got pretty decent acceleration and very good handling so I think I'm probably going to be under quite a bit of pressure somebody possibly in a, is that the Sylvia oh, and it looks like I've just oh, just managed to hold on to the position there but yeah the, the, the guy in the Sylvia seems to be a little bit slow so hopefully we can get by him quickly I've already lost the position just simply by not having the same amount of acceleration as the MX-5 there he's got through pretty quickly He's going for the move, and it looks like he's got it done. He's running a little bit deep, but now he's cutting back and he's taking a nice clean line. The guy in the Sylvia, I think, this looks like he's taking a bit of a cut, but I still managed to get the run on him and got past him before the Lee last corner. I've started using the uh, the hood again. I decided to switch on the hood. I don't always like to use it, but I decided to switch it on just for. Uh, if, for, if people, if, when people are watching, it just makes it a little bit easier to follow what's happening in a race, what lap we're on, what position I'm in, how far people are have behind me or ahead, and it just makes it. Um, it just, uh, I just find that it makes it as as a viewer. I imagine it'll make it a little bit easier to follow the race, and also it's useful for me as well. Um, sometimes. It can be quite useful. I find it a little bit distracting to know. Uh, sometimes I can get a little bit hung up on how fast uh, my lap has been, or if I'm down, or if I'm up on my lap. But um, yeah, sometimes it is quite useful uh, if you if you get if you forget which lap you're on. It's always handy to just have that information. And I guess if you was in a race, you probably would have that information uh, relayed to you in a fairly similar way. It's not like having um, braking line on or the track limits, I used to use the track limits and I used to use braking line, I occasionally do, but 
but uh, if I can help it, uh, I try and avoid using the braking line now. And it's something I don't really look back on. Um, I think it's it's definitely something that you know when you do get more familiar with the tracks, um, the next step is definitely to switch off the braking line and really get to know your braking points because it just makes you a better driver in general. I find that um, if you if you rely on the braking line too much, it can make you a worse driver in the end. But I've managed to catch up with the guy in the Subaru Brat, I think that is. It's the guy who was really fast off the line. It looks like as so, though, yep, it's definitely taking a fairly clean line. Certainly a cleaner line than I took. But as I said, you know, it's just a little bit of fun. It's just, I've come into this lobby for a little bit of fun. So I'm not going to take it too seriously and be too strict on the, the racing line. I think, I think the the you know top drivers and the good drivers they kind of have a bit of an understanding that you would run the curbs a little bit if it was a real race and sometimes the track limits the Forza track limits are a little bit excessive so I'm just tailing this guy now trying to put some pressure on it looks as though he's driving fairly well at the minute though I take a slightly better line through that corner I did get momentarily get a slight run but then his power came into play. I should be able to carry a little bit more speed through this corner. I imagine theoretically down at the end of the main straight I will be a little bit faster. He's gone quite deep into the chicane. Again to his credit he's taking a very clean line through there but it's going to be a little bit too late. It's coming to the end of the race now. I've taken a, a narrower line, I've managed to get closer to the apex but it's definitely going to be too late. And there we are, it's going to be a fifth place. And we can have a quick look at the results now. Which, you know, pace wise is not too bad considering I'm only driving a rental. I've not bothered to get a proper tune. A lot of these guys are probably using uh, actual tunes. Whereas I've just decided to go, you see, as you can see here, this is for the next race. It happens to be the same track, but I'm just using, uh, just using rentals. Uh, I just, you know, I think it's just more, more realistic again, you know, to not be using the Forza wings. So I'm, I'm just using whatever car they give me and just the standard uh, homolog homologation tune that, that you get. There's quite a nice range of. Uh, cars to choose from in, in this uh, division. Here we go, I've gone for the the Sylvia, I think. It's Nissan Sylvia S15, possibly. I don't know, correct me if I'm wrong. I think that's where it is. I can't remember what I chose now. But straight away, gone up into third place and there's a guy in, I think that's the BMW Z3 Coupe and a Mazda MX-5. So it should be quite tricky to beat the guy in the MX-5, but we'll just have to see how he drives. By the looks of it, he's not used a proper tune, he's just used the homologation tune that you get. I've got alongside the guy in the BMW, but he's got some a little bit more speed than me, but he makes a really big mistake there. I'm not quite sure what that was, unless he's just kind of um, giving up on the race there, by the looks of it. So there's a little bit of a gap now from me to first place. I'm going to try and keep it clean, but as I say, not going to worry too much about track limits. I'm not going to obviously cut corners or extend or anything like that, but you know, when it comes to running the curb, I'm not, I'm not going to worry too much. I'm not going to lose too much sleep. This car actually looks quite nice. I, I like it in this color, like a maroon, um, metallic maroon red. Quite nice. So it looks as though possibly gained a little bit on the guy in the lead the guy in the MX-5 I think that's the Mark II MX-5 the Mazda Speed one which has got a supercharger I guess really at this point it's just all about trying to keep that pressure on and it looks as though Iceman has uh, succumbed to that pressure so yeah we we'll go up into the lead we will have um, it will be able to take more carry more speed through this corner as you can see he's got a bit of a run there's a little bit of contact. I, I like to take a central line over that crest, but I've gone very deep and I'm going to lose the position again. On that occasion, he took a very clean line. He uh, 
didn't cut that chicane at all to his credit but hopefully I should have a little bit more speed down this main straight we'll see now see who's got the, the highest top speed and then I use my braking marker on the right hand side there it's just the end of that pit lane it's a little bit more reliable than the boards on the left hand side which can sometimes get knocked over if somebody crashes on the left hand side there well I'm just keeping it nice and narrow here he takes that wide line a lot of people take that wide line but I've been told uh, reliably that the narrow line is faster and indeed it looks like I've got a run here so I pull up alongside this is going to be risky I don't think I've got the handle in to pull it off so I'll back out of that one I think at this point my best chance of getting first place is down the home straight takes a nice tidy line on the right hand side but then completely cuts the chicane on the left hand side I think that that's maybe I would say pushing the track limits too far that time and he has managed to open up the gap I do find it quite annoying when people drive clean until they're under pressure and until they think that the lead might lost I have seen that quite a few times where people will just completely drive completely clean and then as soon as you catch them and it looks as though you're going to get past them they'll just start cutting all the corners and then if, if they get back into the lead and uh, get a little bit of a gap then they start driving clean again and try to get that clean lap quite annoying it's not the worst thing in the world but yeah it does look as though for this race track limits are going to be out of the window at least at the chicane so now it's just a matter of trying to reduce that gap again and try and stay close enough at this last chicane so that I can maybe think about taking a pass and it looks like it's made a bit of a mistake it's gone a little bit deep into the chicane I'm alongside it's a little bit dicey I knew there was no way around the outside so I'm just going to stay as close as I can and this is the opportunity I've been looking for it's still got the acceleration but surely I've got more top speed his car's lighter I use my braking point it's just about the end of that yellow line for the pits it's very close I'm trying to keep the pressure on I don't really want to make contact but the odd knock here and there is going to be inevitable when you're racing this close there's not much, much I can really do around here except stay as close as I can and indeed he's got a little bit sideways so I've got the run he's not giving me much space but I haven't managed to get pie probably going to get a better exit through here than me all I can do here is just make sure I don't run wide I managed to keep it nice and tight to the apex then again he's completely cut the chicane again and managed to use that to get by which to me is quite shameful really I mean it's one thing to cut the corner but to cut the corner so much that you can actually get past somebody it's just something that I would never do. I'm going to try and outbreak him, but I've not managed to do it. He's running it around the outside, but I am a little bit annoyed now because of that pass. So the conservative driving that you saw at the beginning of a race may now be replaced by a slightly more aggressive one. And I may go for moves in the second half that perhaps I wouldn't have in the first. So again, I've got the run in this uh, same straight down to the right-hander. I don't want to back out this time, but he has managed to go around the outside. He's run a little bit wide. I'm going to take a look down the inside at the chicane. But there's nothing really on there. He's cut the corner again. He's got it sideways. I'm going to follow him through with, this, with the corner cut. And then the shit hit the fan as Nelson PK said and he didn't really do much to um, bite that one he just seemed to give up and let me take him off the track it was only a slight tap but I decided the best thing to do would be just to slow down and now I just got to let him take the race which is an unfortunate ending I would have liked to run it right down to the line in a drag race and he did break slightly I think he was gonna he was thinking about letting me win that race but in the end it's the second place which is not too bad although it's a very small lobby 
but it was just nice using some different cars and I did enjoy that you know there was a, a little bit of battling uh, it's just a shame that the lobbies were so small today uh, I'm going to try a little bit later on and hopefully the, the lobbies might be a little bit fuller but yeah it's just one thing to mention uh, if you are going to do cycle division or stock car racing or anything like that or just using stock brakes in general uh, I'd, it's a little tip of mine if you haven't thought of it to go into the controller settings the advanced controller settings and then lower the braking decel from 100% or whatever it is that you're using down to maybe 70% I think 70% is quite good for stock cars and uh, cycle division where you're just using homologated cars like these ones and I just find that it makes it a little bit easier to brake and steer at the same time obviously you're doing braking and steering with your left hand and if you don't have to pull in the trigger quite as deep then it just makes it a little bit easier to control your steering if, if you say going into a corner whilst braking trail braking things like that it just makes it that little bit easier but I just set the decel to 70% and I think that really just you know really makes it uh, just helps and just makes it a lot easier but yeah uh, thanks for watching and like and subscribe and all that good stuff as always and I'll see you for the next one thanks <laughs>